LV. A unknown cataclysm has appeared and the freelancers are called in. It should be a simple job of shutting down the threat before it goes out of control. A routine run, like before, like practice. But something was different about this event, something was off. And right there it appeared, this thing, this lumping body of insects, it appeared out of the red slit in the air as if the air was bleeding and pulsating with life. A large creature of some sort stood and towers over the lanterns as if they were mere sticks to the forest. Its body moved and slivered with a sickening squeal from within, and its beady eyes were bright as bulbs submerged in a sea of the deep. This beast? No, that's putting it too lightly. This abomination wasn't from our world, and from there on I knew this creature wouldn't be the first of its kind nor the end. This would become the beginning of a daily fight for humanity and survival itself. This is our encounter with the Scars. The Scars are an invasive insectoid species who first came to the world via an ancient relic gone AWOL. They are described as a mass body of insects formed together to mimic other life forms, but mainly take on preference in human autonomy. Why this is the case, no one knows, but it might be the general encounters they've had with some of the humans, being the common species to count on the planet, so they may believe they're a dominant species to follow and copy. However, with them mimicking humans, they're not wholly near identical to humans of the world, where a number of factors differentiate between them and us, such as their language is not of this world and not commonly understood by any arcanist as to what they're saying, making conversing with them near impossible. They're also not human, but they're also not alien either. They're insectoids, so 100% insects that copy the human form or other forms as needed. Although it's been mentioned that they don't follow the human features 100%, with some common features being missed out, like eyes, ears, nose, and even lips. They also now follow a hive mind hierarchy, to where the standard foot shoulder don't think for themselves but rely on someone higher up, like a queen, or in our case, a Ascari, to do the ordering and thinking for them. Now you could say this is also a human trait, as we have similar hierarchies put in place throughout society, but ours are a lot more confound in allowing individuals to think more for themselves, as long as it's not harmful to others. They remind me much of the Flood from Halo with their similarities and how the hive mind is broken down into different workers with areas of expertise like enforcers, scouts and hunters who are more frontline fighters but can't act on their own without a leader put in place to control them, such as the Iskari in the case, who only show once a critical mass of workers are reached. They can also be compared to modern day ants, which to be honest is the best comparison to make because of the background each other has and the near similarities they both share. While not the perfect host to be in an insectoid mimicking humans fully, there's evidence that shows that they're strongly following the path of humans through settlements designed for them and out of the way of humans. Weaponry scavenge and cobbled together for a new purpose, an interest for sheep relics to which is once noted by an architect that a group of scars stood in the overall shape around one and gave a great hum, as if they were trying to commune with one. While this does sound like a positive side for the race in terms of cleaning up after nature and not really doing any negative effects, that doesn't mean that they're any way good. Because of their destructive nature, they're known for raiding, stealing and scavenging any type of materials left behind, especially relics, for them to grab and then use them to create weaponry or armory or other things for their causes, but what their goals are is completely unknown to everyone outside of the scar. That and they're also a play to society as their numbers continue to grow as at one point, from the first encounter that humanity had against them and saw the danger of them, freelancers were given the task of bug hunting them to reduce their numbers or from what I understand, eradicate them because of the danger they hold. But because of the Heart of Rage scenario and the many lanterns that died in the process, the Scars were able to grow in numbers twice the size they were before, and generally taking over prominent areas such as Dustkeep or the H-Engine landmark in the Eastern Reach, and make it their homes while also do more raids on human sentiment with little to no fear or repercussion. This also comes with the negative effect of them damaging natural areas for their resources and leaving them huskless for life. 
Take a look at Lakeshore, which is known mining area for its resources and vast amount of water that flows through the area. It was a hotspot at one point for humans, mine expeditions, but now only have scars in the area and the water system severely destroyed to non-usable degree. In fact, the mass majority of areas that the scars take over lead to them being stripped of all their resources, which if we decided to take back a scar infected area, there would be no point because of how much damage has already been done, and let's say Active for example was there, but that's that's as far as I can think of to where freelancers would attempt a large rage on their camps, and even that comes with negative effects. But it doesn't even stop there I'm afraid. The scars now can't die a true death like most creatures in the world. You know how in Dark Souls you keep dying over and over again but continue where you left off with a few downsides. You see the scars now, and this is a kind of theory that I've seen, but I don't know if it's 100%, but I'm going to go with it for now, as it's kind of interesting theory. The scars are immortal in nature, to once their physical form is destroyed, their soul or essence returns to the hive that they once came from, and then becomes recycled again with a new body and such. So in shorter terms, every time you kill a scar, their physical body dies, but their soul gets reused into a different body, as if they're in a big manufacturing plant. Sounds cool, but you also have to really think about how it might have some kind of mental effect on them, which over time would just cause them to go crazy. But then when you think about it, they are a mass pile of insects, so it wouldn't be as a whole, it would be bit by bit. So if an insect goes crazy, they just replace it. I'm, I'm digging a bit too deep here, but it's kind of a thought when you want to think more into it. If you destroy the body and their soul gets reused into another patch of insects, basically you've got an infinite amount of scars that can never truly die. One thing to note though is that when they do die, do they also retain their memories? And if so, are they placed in the same body as before, or can they go into a new form which is stronger than their past form depending on merits? All of this is interesting to find out, as it could mean there are scars that have been around longer than the current scars and experienced life multiple times. But do fear this as well, as it could also mean the fights against scars could become a lot more tougher in the near future, as if they retain their memories, this could also lead to more smarter scars in potential and more Iskaris. Now, this also sadly brings in the idea of evolution of scars and whether they grow in power over long periods of time. For example, the Luminary is a walking tank like machine with four legs and a cannon, and is the mixed result of machinery and insects to create a new intention of life. They are also called Iskaris by some, but are easily noticed by many because of their main sheer size and firepower they have. One thing I find quite interesting with them is that compared to other Scars, they can actually talk and speak in the human tongue with one example from the Dimaris, the Excari from one of the Brin's mission, who speaks in a female voice, but not in a 100% human voice. It sounds more robotic than human. It's itself in the fort. Ask what it wants. I have a plan. What? Fine. Tell us what you want, Excari. The archivists fumble at Shaper relics. The Dimaris, the Excari will make them work. Shaper's energy will gather. Swords will feed, metal, flesh, machines. Damaris will strip your fort's bones. Pray, Green Grabbits, it's actually telling us the plan. Which prompts me to think that they do evolve in a way that is similar to how a human child grows over time. But whether this is true for all of them, though, is still unknown, as this, that's just one prime example. We haven't seen other examples of Iskaris actually talking to us. Only that one there. But this shows that through advancement, Iskari are evolving into a new and slowly powerful state that's never been seen before and could rival the very humans they copied. In fact, if we leave something like this for too long, they could potentially overthrow or worse, enslave humans. For all we know, this could be a new step for the Scars in terms of advancing as a dominant species by mixing technology into themselves to become a perfect form that humans can't even comprehend. I feel like there's more to the Scars that we're not aware, 
as although we view them as enemies, they seem to have a certain goal that they wish to achieve, as they seem to have a very close bond with gathering and harvesting relics for whatever their ending goal is. Which kind of fits the theme of them scavenging very well, but they also have a common goal of expanding and taking over areas while pushing harder on human territories more and more until everything is consumed. I have a few theories of what they could potentially be planning. One theory is that the endgame goal is to control all the relics that they seem to be stealing a lot of and try to use it to create some kind of powerful force that would enhance them and become even more stronger, kind of like a new god form that we've seen with the monitor. Or perhaps they want to go back to where their main home world is, or if they don't have a home world, maybe they want to open up a new rift to where they can bring more of their own species into our world to the point of where they can overtake us. Or perhaps there's something a lot bigger at hand that we're not prepared for. Something that we've never seen before and requires us to counter that threat with a full counter invasion, such as a cataclysm event. Which could mean it could lead to a number of lives being lost in the process, just to stop it. We won't know until future DLC and beyond are released over time. But this is a very interesting race that is shrouded in mystery that I would like to know more about over time. But everyone, that is everything about the scars I can summarize about them. I could go on for ages a bit more, but most of it would be theories in comparison to real world examples. So instead of me boring you, this is just the lowdown and brief short explanation as to what the scars are, what their main ideal goals are, and what they could be planning for the near future. So like always, if you enjoy the content, by all means leave a like and subscribe for more for future lore bits. But like always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.